All right, so enough with the tours and all the all the features and everything here. Let's let's make something. Um, I am going to um, come over here and just hit click. You know, there's nothing here quite yet, so we're going to come over here, say new map. And when you go to the new map page, um, there's a couple different things you can do. Um, the aerial stitch workflow. Uh, so we, we refer to everything as a workflow, which is a series of steps that you have to follow to turn images into maps. And depending on what kind of images you have and what kind of maps you want to make, it's different. Um, so we kind of have some wizards that you follow through. Um, this, the aerial stitch workflow, basically takes pictures and turns it into a non-geo-referenced map. Um, being that it's not geo-referenced, it's going to have a random rotation. It's going to have a black background. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's a really easy way to um, you know stick, stitch your images together and kind of share it. And if it's not geo-referenced, nobody's going to know, there's no way to tell where in the world it was taken. Um, so, you know, that's an interesting feature um, depending on kind of what your, what your goals are. Um, further down, uh, we have our geo-referenced imagery workflows. Um, so, you know, this is where you apply GCPs or ground control points um, to the maps or to the images to correlate a point in a picture with a point on the map or a GPS location. Um, and what that'll allow you to do is, is accurately align the, what would be created up here, this, this stitch with the black background. It'll, georeferencing is what puts that on a map, or, you know, on, on, a, on a normal, like over, as an overlay on a normal Google map, web map. So for the georeferenced map with base map, which means you take your pictures, you select a picture in the image here, and then you select a point on a base map. So you're basically just you know, dropping pins like you know, every other web interface out there. So you drop a pin on the image, you drop a pin on the map, and you say, okay, that's a, that's a ground control point or a GCP. So, and what you're gonna get from doing, you know, the minimum for doing a, a base map and, and the manual one here is uh, seven ground control points. And three of, or six of those have to be three redundant points. So basically you have to have three points in which you select two different images and pick a point in that image, two different images, and correlate that to one point on the map. That's kind of how we get an initial triangulation on where the camera's looking and do some math and take, you know, take care of, um, you know, what the camera's seeing, um, and correlating that to what you know the real world, um, and helping us to kind of create our three D model, which we then use to, um, to to generate our ortho photos. So um, so that's that's the first one. You know that takes seven GCPs. Three of them have to be kind of redundant. Um, the same is true on the geo reference with manual GCPs. So if you're taking imagery in a place that doesn't have a good base map, like you know, if, if you're not going to be able to pick out a feature that's, that's, you know, of sufficient detail to click on, it's already pretty hard to do um, with, with, um, you know, Google Maps or whatever, you know, we, we spend a lot of time kind of trashing Google Maps, but, um, you know, that, it's just because we're trying to get higher resolution than they offer. So how can you use the base map to provide your precision? You know, it's kind of a, kind of a catch-22. Um, the, the bottom line with this one is it's good enough. If you're a technical user, um, and, and you know you probably know what you're doing if you're going to be doing this, but um, you know you use a high high precision uh, GPS system. Uh, you know Magellan and Trimble make a bunch of them. Um, that are that use differential GP, different antenna systems and are are, are more sensitive um, GPS receivers that are going to give you really really accurate down to a couple centimeters um, GPS points and. So you would take those measurements at a couple places that you're going to image, and go and find those images and drop your marker, and then basically type in, um, you know, your 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 GCPs. So you're going to need at least four of those, um, you know, three to be to get the redundant uh, image match, 
and then one that's kind of just a free floating one. You can do more. Uh, more is always good. More is always better when it comes to GCPs, as long as they're good GCPs. Um, doing a whole bunch of crappy GCPs doesn't help anybody out. Um, you know, but th what that's going to do is kind of give you this same, um, you know, overlay over an existing base map, but it's going to be more accurate. And sometimes it looks like the um, overlay is less accurate because it doesn't line up well necessarily with, with, with the base map, but that's probably because the base map's off. Um, if you go out and you take these images um, and you do a good job of taking very accurate ground control points and you match them well in the matching process, you're going to be more accurate than what Google Maps is. Um, and also all of the derivative outputs, um, GeoTIFF and the DEM and everything are going to be more accurate than what's available otherwise. Um, so the third one we're currently offering is uh, geo georeference map with a camera or with a GPS camera. So what this does is sift through. So you take all your images, but each of these images, the camera actually inserts a. Uh, it's it's called an EXIF tag. E X I F. Um, it's an acronym. I forget it what it means but anyway so it's it kind of it tells you what the camera was the focal length of the lens um different manufacturers do things differently but some cameras that sony N sony nex5 for example um has a really nice gps in it and it just says okay i took a picture here's where i was when i took that picture and that makes it so you can create a georeference map with just the images without going through this whole pairing of points on the ground with points on a base map. Is it accurate? Sort of. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I hesitate to say that it's accurate. Um, it, it's as good as the GPS is, and the GPS is good to like some meters. Um, you know, generally, you get pretty good results, and if you're looking for something that's just kind of good enough, um, it's going to be fine. Um, so, but it's an easy way to get, you know, with no additional work, basically. There's one, one step. Doing the XF, uh, camera XF georeferencing takes one step more than the, uh, than the aerial stitch workflow. It's basically just saying, yes, that tag is correct. Um, so, um, you know, th this is an interesting option. In, in order of accuracy, it's probably manual GCP, base map GCP, XF. Um, and it's probably the opposite order um, as far as ease of use. So um, after you create these layers, um, and this is not turned on yet, we're going to ho hopefully have this turned on in the next couple weeks, um, you will be able to, instead of using the base map with uh, of, of kind of dubious quality and accuracy um, for your base map, you'll actually be able to use your own maps to align a new layer uh, that's taken over an area that you've already already imaged and processed and turned into a map layer, you'll be able to use that previously captured layer to select your points. So all the detail that you had when you when you select these raw images here or the raw point or the, the tie points here, you're gonna have here. So it's gonna be a whole lot easier to get way more accurate. So in terms of relative accuracy, this one's gonna win. For relative accuracy, for absolute ac accuracy, this one's going to win. Um, you know, so if you're really, really, really wanting to do something and be super, super accurate, you'd want to do this first. Take your manual GCPs, and then use that manually collected GCP, you know, map output as your input for further, you know, dropping further images on the. Uh, or for further layers on your map. So, and then I hesitate to even talk about this. Um, for, for precision agriculture, um, it's called NDVI um, imaging. And what it does is take the ratio between visible, image, visible uh, light and infrared light. And there's some known ratios and it takes a lot of cal camera calibration and things like that in, in, into effect. But um, we will be, we will be, officially will be um, offering um, these same workflows um, with NDVI imagery. Um, and, you know, it'll cost 2x in points um, because it's probably three times the processing. Uh, but, you know, what the output will be 
for for just this will be a visible and i a visible uh, overlay and ir overlay and then the ratio overlay um, all right on top of each other so you can kind of quick click through them very quickly um, and see okay that's, that's this area that's this area that's a, this area um, and then we're going to kind of couple that into the rest of this so for those of you that have been uh, asking about ndvi we will be doing it we'll be offering it in a couple of